Hi there folks, Tower Tech here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at NVMe drives in RAID 0 or a striped array. And it's fair to say that when Threadripper came out in the late summer, it absolutely threw the gauntlet down for Intel's high-end desktop enthusiast lineup. It's now $800 CPU part, is easily outperforming its equivalent Intel $1,000 part. With 16 cores and 32 threads, this thing is a true monster once it comes to multi-threaded performance. And for me, it's absolutely fantastic in applications like Premiere Pro and Photoshop that really do make use of all of those threads. Most appealing about this is unlike the Intel platform, it doesn't restrict you on the number of available PCIe Express lanes. Intel locks that down depending on which CPU you procure. And I don't think that that's a limitation of the CPU. I think that's Intel being a bit stingy. But AMD have provided us 60 lanes of PCIe goodness across their entire Threadripper lineup. Of course, you would be consuming somewhere in the order of 32 of those if you've got an SLI set up. So why on earth would you need 60 of these things? And the answer is NVMe RAID 0. One of these drives on its own will give you absolutely phenomenal performance. The Samsung 960 lineup gives you somewhere in the order of 3,200 to 3,500 megabytes per second read speed and somewhere in the order of 2,000 megabytes per second write speed. For me, that's very advantageous when I'm creating 4K workloads and I'm stringing a whole load of files together. Premiere Pro creates what it calls a scratch track, which is effectively a draft of what you're gonna render out, and that has very intensive IOPS on your disks. So having somewhere in the order of what would realistically be 6,000 megabytes per second once you've accounted for the overhead of creating an array could indeed speed up my workflow on a daily basis. So I set about buying myself two 960 Pros from the Samsung lineup, and set about creating myself a RAID array. So I made sure that I flashed my motherboard with the latest version of the BIOS. I chose to go for a beta BIOS on my Acer Zenith board, which is 0801. Making sure that I've enabled NVMe RAID, which is in the AMD PBS settings submenu within my BIOS, depending on your board manufacturer, this could be in a different place. That then enabled me to go ahead and create the RAID array within BIOS. Jumping onto the AMD website and downloading their RAID driver. This isn't available from Samsung. You do need to get this direct from AMD. And then making sure once I got to the point of installing Windows that I loaded the driver so that the RAID array was correctly displayed. Now, a word of warning, I did find that the two disks presented in Windows Installer as two 512 gig arrays, despite the fact that I had built the RAID within BIOS. And there are three independent drivers that you have to install one after another. It's not just one, and actually the RAID array starts to show after two. Make sure you do install that third driver as well, otherwise you could run into problems later on. Installation of Windows was quite slick, uh, but what I did find is that the actual boot times of Windows were immaterially changed. In fact, I actually found them a little bit longer than on a single NVMe drive, but that's probably within the margin of error. So there's another bottleneck in the system there rather than actual uh, hard disk read and write speeds uh, in terms of booting into Windows. I did find that things like Premiere Pro were very, very zippy and uh, doing some synthetic benchmarks, I managed to find a 7,000 megabytes per second there or thereabouts read speed and a 4,000 megabytes per second write speed there or thereabouts, which is absolutely phenomenal. And it's worth noting here, guys, if you overclock your CPU, that has a direct impact to the speed that the PCIe bus is running at, and that will speed up your benchmarks, having looked at the results that others have got, that actually increased read speeds in the order of a gigabyte per second read, which is absolutely phenomenal and significant. Now, do you need this in all practical terms? Possibly not, it has absolutely made my workflow slicker and easier within Premiere Pro, and I've actually found a small but noticeable incremental 
uh, reduction in render times, but most notably was the performance of when I was scrubbing backwards and forwards through a timeline that I was editing. Those extra read cycles on the disk really made a difference to how well Premiere Pro was performing. A single NVMe drive is more than adequate, but ask yourself the question, how much is the price difference between two 512 gig NVMe drives and one one gig NVMe drive? And actually is that extra money worth a slightly improved uh, performance on your hard drive. Remember, you know, particularly for content creation, it's always gonna be a bottleneck somewhere in your system. It's certainly not the CPU in terms of Threadripper, but as I've called out in a couple of my videos before, I'm still only getting somewhere in the order of 80% CPU utilization once I'm rendering videos out. I've definitely found the lower the bit rate, the faster that has that performance has been. Uh, so it's peaked up to sort of 100% for 1080p uh, videos being rendered out at around 10 megabits per second. I found that that dropped to about 85, 90% for 1440p videos uh, at around about 24 megabits per second. And then that drops to about 75 to 80% for 4K workloads at about 45 megabits per second. I have seen that noticeably jump back up once I've installed the NVMe drive. So it's fair to say that it does make a difference. And for what is a very immaterial uh, increment on the price over buying one large NVMe drive, it feels worthy of the platform. And truthfully, you have to ask yourself, what else are you gonna do with those 60 PCIe lanes? So there we go, guys. I found overall the process of setting this up was fairly painless. If you do get stuck, plenty of uh, Reddit threads and uh, you know, there's Asus threads, etc., that, that can help you uh, with a little bit of troubleshooting. The first time uh, I tried to install Windows and I loaded just one of those drivers, I got very confused couldn't understand why I couldn't see my drive. Quick look on a Reddit thread and it's like, right, okay, I've got to install three drivers one after another. And actually the same is true if you build that uh, RAID 0 drive within Windows, you still have to go through that process. And actually, having looked at some other YouTube videos, it looks like it's a little bit more clunky actually doing that on, uh, on the Windows disk management utility rather than actually doing it straight within the BIOS. You have the AMD RAID expert utility built into the BIOS of my motherboard. And if you choose to do that within Windows, that's another application that you have to download. It's another set of processes that you need to go through. So my recommendation is save yourself that pain, make sure you've got the latest version of the uh, BIOS installed and flashed on your motherboard, make it nice and simple and create yourself a bootable RAID drive. It's absolutely obscene and slightly unnecessary, but uh, if you're buying a Threadripper, CPU, that's probably the sort of space that you're in. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you in my next one.